Hello and welcome to the Geek Club. Today on the table before me we have something different for this is the Caesar ET16 Plus, a professional book scanner that has been provided to me free of charge for an honest review. As you will see soon this thing uses a lot of automation meaning that you will be able to scan a page in around one and a half seconds meaning that you can do a 300 page book with high quality results in around seven minutes and being able to scan both matte and glossy pages. So what in buggerations does this all mean? Well it means there's a good investment for many uses such as documents, books, magazines, invoices, certificates, business cards and for geeks like me the whole thing is just yummy. Well hang on I hear you say. I would like to preserve old rare books or fragile books. I ain't going to be trying bending pages flat for a scanner to do that. It would damage my book or magazine. Well, it's gentle way of handling the books and the fact that it uses lasers to automatically flatten the page after scanning means you don't have to put access pressure on the book trying to get pages flat. For me, this means it's great for scanning old computer manuals and magazines for archival purposes and the added bonus, when you turn them into PDFs you can do word searches on, means those scanned magazines can be quickly searched when I'm researching a subject. Physically, it's very smart looking and just happens to look like a raised up alien ready for the attack. <laughs> Which is a bonus. <laughs> okay, I've had my moment. Shh. Momentarily, we shall take a look at what comes in the very nice box, which is an adventure in itself. Have a tour of the machine and its software and show you it's all in use so you can see the function of the machine and see the end results of some scans for yourself. So let's see what you get in the box with the ET16 Plus. And straight away when you take the box out of the cardboard shipping box you get the feeling of premium. There is a sophisticated simplicity in the design and the materials are all high quality. You instantly get the feeling that a lot of thought has gone into this. Open this black box and you're presented with the kit, safely packed away in this quality high density foam. To remove the scanner itself, we remove the scanning mat, which is a nice thick material. You can see that there is even a notch in the mat to allow you to line up the head. Next we take out the head itself, which we'll look at shortly in closer detail. That on the right, well that's one of my favourite bits, but we'll come back to that later. In the middle we have this envelope, which contains your documentation and a driver CD. There is a quick start guide which is in multiple languages, although I found the video tutorials much more helpful, more on that later. Warranty card and quality certificate. Under this we have a hand button. To the right is the power adapter which comes with multiple options depending on where you live. Next is a foot pedal, giving yet another option for how to take images. Next a USB cable for connection to your computer. Finally in this section we have what are known as finger cuts. These yellow bits of plastic are used to gently hold down the edges of pages when scanning and with this pattern on this scanner will automatically move them from the resulting image. Now this thing underneath the mat, this is an extra set of LEDs that comes with the plus model that allows you to scan reflective surfaces and what makes them one of my favourite parts is how they connect through a magnetic interface. Ok looking at the scanner itself which has a good weight to it and seems overall to be built from premium materials on the top of the lower section we have buttons for controlling the light intensity or zooming and for taking an image should you want to use that option. On the rear of the base we have a reset button, an interface for the button or foot pedal, a USB output for communicating with your computer and an on off switch. On the top you have a very nice TFT screen so you can position the book and see the present status. Some status lights and underneath the top you can see the LED lights used for matte surfaces. The emitters for the three lasers that are used for flattening pages in post. Ok so now we've had a look at the machine itself, let's show you how to use it and some of its functions. Right, ok so what we're going to do now is have a look at how you use this thing. So fire up the software and uh, go into scanner. Now you'll come to this page which is actually a preview of images already taken. I'd rather it uh, go straight into the scan page but there you go. So next it's going to look for the device. Uh, I'm using an older computer at the moment for this review so it takes a bit longer. Ok so we are connected to the scanner and I've got a book in place and what I want to do is scan the front page first. So what I want to do is on the right hand side you do have options, different colour options but I just leave it at default. Uh, for this, uh, so go for a single page and you can see it's uh, 
put a board around where it thinks it is. I, if I put my fingers in there, I can upset it. Put my fingers and it goes back. So the other thing is, this is a glossy page. So what we need to do is put on the back lights and switch off the main lights. And there you go, you haven't got a reflection now. Yeah, something down there is uh, upsetting it. There we go. Right, it's because my the mat goes off the edge of the table. So, and she's distracting it. So, there we are. It's all lined up. So, if I press the... Uh, so you can upset it by getting in the frame. If I just press on my uh, click button. There you go, it's processing it. And we can now go... If we go press back... We can look at the resulting image. That was one from earlier. There we go. And uh, if you don't like uh, what it's done there, if you want to cut the edges off or something like that, then what you can do is go to crop and you can draw a line and crop the image if you so require, like that. And press confirm. Now, it does, that was the whiteout option, so what we're going to do is do it again. Put the line around it. This time, I'm going to select cut, which I think most people are going to be using, so there you go. And if, it's, if you want to rotate it, you can do, you've got rotation options there. Now, if we now go back to scan, we can set up a page. So go to we'll go to the page with some decent stuff on. So we've got sound generator here. So what we want to do is scan both of these pages which we'll put later into a PDF. So what we need to do is go to facing pages. You'll see the line up here in the center. You'll level that up as best you can. You can see it's all happening on the little monitor on the uh, computer on the sorry on the scanner as well. Now, this is where these little guys come in handy. So what we'll do, put one on each thumb, and you can lie this flat on the book, like that. As long as you're not covering any text up, or any images, this should remove it once it's done. So we can do that to get it as flat as possible. And then, hit our little button, and off she goes. And once it's processed, we can see the result. There we go, there's one page, and there's the other. So with this one, again, if you want, you can crop, make sure that's on cut. Uh, and we can take the bottom off. If you're really fussed about that, you have the option to fix it. There you go. Also, if the page uh, comes out and it's badly curved, you have the option down here to change the laser lines manually. Uh, I've tried this myself, but I found I just made it worse. So uh, yeah, I don't use that. But that's it. And we've scanned that with the uh, backlights on instead of the main lights. So let's look at the difference if we scan it with the main lights on. So. If I go to scan, because I did that by mistake in the lighting mode for glossy. So that is the lighting mode for that. Let's see if it makes any difference, really. So, lined up, ready. It's on the mic settings. Let's do it again. And let's go see what difference that's made. It looks... Yeah, it's a slightly different colour, but yeah. Hmm. I actually prefer it with that one, with that one, uh, with that one on, to be honest. Well, there we go. There's your different options. Now, so you can use the button, you can use the panel, you can use the button on the machine itself to take the images. But you can also auto scan. If you've got a book uh, that you can 
flip through rapidly and you haven't got problems like trying to hold it down all the time like that. Uh, an option is to auto scan. I'll show, I'll show you that now. Right, so for example, here I've got a BBC microcomputer user guide. And uh, what I want to do is scan this one in. Now the front cover is glossy, so I'll so switch those lights on and those ones off. There we go, sets it up. I'm going to raise this mat because, yeah, it's uh, the mat bends over the edge of the table, so my table's too small for this. So just playing with the mat. If this was perfectly flat, this would work all the time, but uh, yeah, just an issue I have because of my mat. Now, so that's the cover done. So what we're going to do is flip this. Now, this is one of the shortcomings of the system, but it's not a big, bad thing. Uh, it won't remove this spine thing, so. But, you know, <clears throat> that's not a massive issue, is it really? So what we can do is now we'll go on to facing pages. And there we go. And what we can do is auto scan. So if I click there, I can start it off, press the first one, there we go, it's off, and what do now, turn it over, and it should recognise the fact that we've changed the page, there we go. Now uh, when the laser lines have disappeared, you see the laser lines pop up there, and when they've disappeared, it is done, and you can change your page. Just like that. Right, so what we need to do now, just doing that little section, and what we're going to do is turn this into a searchable PDF. Let me show you how to do that. So once you've got your pages sorted, you can go through them, go back, and there's all our pages. That one didn't go very well. So you can either, you can retake them. You've got options here to delete the page, rescan the image, you can insert, you can add another page and the details are there. So these all come out nice, apart from that one, which is completely wonky. So that's too wonky. So we'd have to replace that one. That one had the same issue. Most to go out fine. We'll pretend they're all fine for this exercise. So what we're going to do is make a PDF, but a searchable PDF. So if we click on search, oh no, we need to select all, go on searchable PDF, confirm, wanted English, uh, print as a test. Oh, or something like that. Let's confirm. <laughs> test save and it went on process through that and turn it into a searchable PDF okay it's finished processing we see those tests complete so if we shrink this we can have a look on our desktop test PDF and there it is a searchable PDF search uh, BBC. Huh. Yeah, that page went a bit wrong, didn't it? There we go. Ta -da. So proof it does work. Now the other claim you do with this is that you can do 300 pages in seven minutes. So what we're going to do is do that. So I'm going to scan my little book here. Uh, I'll scan the whole thing, but what we'll do, it will not include the scanning of the front page in the final challenge because the front page is a manual scan, so that it wouldn't be fair on it. So we'll take that one, places, there it goes, done, and then we can start doing the pages themselves. So now that the first page set up, just move that up slightly. I wish that 
the graph would stay in position a bit longer so you can see what you're doing. We'll move this back to uh, selection and put the main lights on, nice and bright. And I don't think we need to, do we need to assist that a little bit? No, do it now. Right, we'll do a scan and try. It looks, actually, we'll just leave it like that. Right, let's try that one. See what we got when it comes out. Might try again. Uh, not too bad. Right, okay, so we're going to try this uh, 300 page challenge. I'll do the whole book, but we'll start uh, just with this. So what to do this, what we need to do is go to our, another page, like that, and then we click on auto scan, take a picture of the first one, and when it's done that, There you go, I recognise you've turned the page. When the lasers disappear, you're done. Right, okay. What we'll do, we'll get to page one here. Yeah? Okay, let's see how long this takes. When the laser lines have disappeared, that's when you can turn the page. So, we'll see how long this takes. Hmm, 13 minutes five. That's not quite seven minutes, uh, but I suspect he wasn't using the automated system. I suspect he was using a button for that. So yeah, for the automated system, 13 minutes, five seconds, that's still impressively fast. And if you want to do it even faster, just use the manual system. So there you go. Now, uh, a few of the early pages did come out wonky because I wasn't holding it down properly. Uh, but in reality, I'd go back and uh, rescan them. Uh, the other thing I've learnt is not to put this on my thumb. It's just too much. What I best, best thing to do, I found, was just to hold it and put pressure. And then when changing pages in this direction, as you change, put pressure on the spine a little bit, and that pushes the pages out. So your page is already in the right position to hold it there. Like that, you see? And it's happily scanning away. See? So that pushes the page out, put that there, make sure it's not covering that, and off it goes. So, yes, there we go. So, conclusions. While never having owned a piece of kit like this before, I can't compare it to other offerings. But I can only comment on my experience of what I have before me. And I'd say it's rather good. Importantly, as somebody who has never used a piece of kit like this before, I found I could quickly learn to use it. And it can do everything I needed with the tasks I had for it. And the results, like the design and materials used in this machine itself, are quality. Therefore, if you're looking for a machine like this, as you can see with the results I've achieved as a first time user, it's most excellent. If you have any questions or have any experience with the CRT ET range, then please let us know in the comments. If the video has been useful for you in making your decision, or you've used it as a tutorial on how to use the machine and found it useful, please also let us know in the comments. And please like the video, it definitely helps and is definitely appreciated. Just remains to say, thank you very much for watching.